Hello children, welcome to another session with me for a little bit of reading. Today we are going to read the story all about a dog and this story has been written by Alfred George Gardner. He was born in the year 1865 and he died in the year 1946. Let's know a little bit more about him. Alfred George Gardner who wrote under the name of Alpha of Plough was an essayist. His essays are marked by light heartedness and wit and are often rich in reflections of human life. This essay is more about the proper observation of rules than about a dog. In his humorous style, Gardner conveys a strong message. Let's read the story now. Before I read the story, let me just brief you a little bit with what is happening here. The whole episode, what all is happening here. Well, basically, it's a very, very cold night and uh, there are some travelers who need to travel in the bus. There is this, uh, there are two ladies and one gentleman who need to board a bus and they have a dog along with them. Now this, uh, the people here are not supposed to carry dogs in the bus, but the little dog was very small and she had to carry that dog with her. So somehow she goes, gets up on the, she boards the bus and they move forward. But when the conductor arrives and they, he sees her with the dog in the lap, so he tells her to move off. So let's see what all, what are the sequences that happen in the story. Let's read the story. It was a bitterly cold night and even at the far end of the bus, the east wind that raved along the street cut like a knife. Bitterly here means extremely cold. It was very, very cold that night. Even at the far end of the bus, the east wind that raved along. Now raved along means moved with a lot of noise. It, sh it, it made a lot of noise while moving. The wind that raved along the street cut like a knife. Cut like a knife means it was so chilled, it was so cold that it pinched like a, uh, the, the edges of the knife. The bus stopped and two women and a man got in together and filled the vacant places. Vacant means empty. Filled the vacant places. The young woman was dressed in seal skin. Now what's a seal skin? Let's see. Seal skin is the skin and fur of seals used by people to make waterproof jackets and boats. Here it means dressed expensively. It's a very rich attire that somebody puts on. And carried one of those little piku, pikunis. Uh, now that is uh, the name, the name of a, that's a breed of a dog which is pronounced as pikunis. Uh, carried one of those little Pekingese dogs that women in seal skin like to carry in their laps. Pekingese dogs, remember. Now let's see what that means. A breed of small pug-nosed, short-legged and long-haired dog. That must be very cute. Okay. Now uh, the conductor came in and took the fares. Fares is the amount, the amount uh, for, that you pay for your traveling somewhere. The conductor came in and took the fares. Then his eyes rested with cold malice on the beady-eyed uh, beady toy dog. Now malice, what do we mean by malice? Here malice means by the uh, intention of harming something. Now this conductor, he rested his eyes in a way to harm that uh, dog there. Uh, on a beady eye dog. Now beady itself means a very poisonous kind of uh, thing happened, dog there. Now this is being narrated by the, this is being said by the author, the narrator. It is his uh, views that he's putting in. What all he's seeing, he's putting forward here. I saw trouble brewing. Now what do we mean by brewing? Means boiling up, heating up. You brew the tea, you brew the coffee. These are heated, they're boiled to be made. Similarly, he was, he could see, he saw some trouble which was coming up gradually. I saw trouble brewing. This was the opportunity for which he had been waiting. 
who had been waiting the conductor he had been waiting and he intended to make the most of it i had marked him as the type of what mr wells has called the resentful employees resentful employees a man uh, sorry the man with a general vague grievance against everything and a particular grievance against passengers who came and sat in his bus while he shivered at the door now what is happening here here what is being explained is actually the conductor was full of uh, vague grievances vague means uh, not clearly expressed or understood something which is not clearly expressed not shown and neither is it understood properly and grievance children means it's a complaint about something wrong something that is wrong that has happened that's a complaint about it so what is uh, why is the conductor so irritated with things he wants everything as per the rules to be followed simply because he being the conductor has to be at the gate at the gate of the uh, the bus where it is very very cold whereas the passengers are sitting inside comfortably and having the good warmth of the bus so basically he was taking out that anger on the passenger here and moreover that time the pets were not allowed on the buses at all if somebody had to take carry a pet they had to sit on top of the bus they were absolutely not allowed to sit uh, inside the bus uh, along with the other passengers which was absolutely not possible that time right let's see further what happens you must take that dog out he said with sour venom a bitter venom is poison now the conductor is telling if you can see uh the conductor is very angry and he's just pushing that uh, not even pushing he's just verbally telling the person to be out of that bus there you must take that dog out that now that lady speaks out i shall certainly not do anything of the kind you can take my name and address means if there is any problem you can get in touch with me my you can take my name and my address wherever i stay so if there is a problem because of uh, the dog with me you can always get in touch with me once again said the woman who had evident who had evidently expected the challenge and knew the reply now the lady had accepted the challenge the conductor had told her to move out of the bus but she had refused she had accepted the challenge of not moving out of the bus and she very well knew what is going to happen next evidently means very clearly okay you must take that dog out that's my orders i won't go on the top in such weather it would kill me said the woman certainly not said her lady companion now the the other lady uh, with her you remember there were two ladies who boarded the bus and one gentleman so the second lady along with her she also said certainly not you've got a cough as it is it's nonsense said the male companion now that male companion uh, the friend who uh, boarded the bus with her he also said the same thing it's nonsense the conductor pulled the bell and the bus stopped this bus doesn't go until the dog is brought out and he stepped on to the pavement and waited now what has happened the bus has been stopped and he is waiting down he got down the bus and on the pavement that means on the a uh, footpath area he is waiting and the bus has stopped there he is waiting for her to get down the bus if, if she wants to travel she can move up on the bus with her pet but but let's see this bus the conductor pulled the bell and the bus stopped this bus doesn't go until the dog is brought out and he stepped on to the pavement and waited it was his moment of triumph means his moment of victory triumph means victory now how do you think it was his uh, moment of tri triumph simply because he felt that the challenge which he had given the lady to move out of the bus so finally now she has to get down so it's his victory here he had the law on his side as per the law you were not you are not supposed to travel with your pets in inside the bus either on top or you don't travel you move walk down so as it is uh, he had the law on his side and a whole bus full of angry people under the horror 
harrow of uh, under the harrow what do you mean by harrow harrow is actually a harrow is a uh, farming machine what does it do with mental teeth on a frame used to break up the soil after plowing now once you plow the the soil needs to be to be turned around a little bit so that uh, the machine that does that is a harrow but here this word has been used as greatly distressed i mean very very upset with the whole thing now what is happening here he had the law on his uh, on his side and a whole bus full of fury full of anger uh, angry people under his harrow under his that machine actually his stress that he had in his head his embittered soul was having a real holiday embittered soul means something which causes you to become bitter tasteless something which is very sour inside that is something which he had in his inside in his soul was something something like that he is not feeling a little bit of humanity also towards the lady that in this cold weather how would she go up and sit on top of the bus she would freeze and moreover she had cough so it was very difficult to do something like that the storm inside rose high now what do you mean inside as it is there was wind outside but the storm inside the bus rose high people became more angry shameful he is no better than a german now who is this uh, who is the shouting first tell me that it's basically the people inside the passengers inside the bus are shouting and they're shouting at the conductor not the lady they're shouting at the conductor and telling that such a shameful kind of a thing he is doing why is he sending the lady right on top of the bus he is doing something very wrong and they've compared uh, the narrator here is comparing uh, the conductor with the german because at that time when uh, the war was going on they had no no mercy for the people and the people were ruthlessly killed so no humanity similarly the conductor has no humanity for the lady how she would be sitting in the cold on top of the bus why isn't he in the army he should be in the army such a ruthless man he should be in the army only call the police let's all report him now all the people the angry people inside the bus they are telling that let's call the police and we'll report about this conductor to the police let's make him give us our fares back now either they give uh, the conductor should give them the fares back otherwise he should allow the lady to go for everybody was on one side of the lady on one side uh, of the lady i mean uh, the entire bus the people the passengers were all favoring the lady right but the conductor was all alone on the other side for everybody was on the side of the lady and the dog okay this little animal sat blinking at the dim lights in happy unconsciousness of the rumpus of which he was the cause now the poor little dog the whole story is based upon a dog but basically we have more of uh, the situation because of the dog it's not the dog that is involved in this so much as much as the situation because of the dog that is involved in this whole uh, story here what do we mean by rumpus that noisy disturbance so this uh, little dog is just looking at the light uh, with an unconscious uh, lights in a happy unconscious is really not uh, unaware of the things happening the the noise which is being created the disturbance which is being created because of him the conductor came to the door what's your number said one talking out uh, sorry taking out a pocket book with a gesture of terrible things now what is happening here he is taking out a pocket book from his pocket and a gesture is a way to show or express something gesture of terrible things this horrible kind of things happening so he just took out the pocket book to and and he's asking her what is your number there's my number said the conductor imperturbably imperturbl now this here means very calmly but the conductor is being questioned where is your number there is another person who's coming out taking out from the pocket and he's very uh, disgusted and he's telling where what's your number and the uh, conductor he says there's my number 
the conductor says it in a very calm way give us our fares back you've engaged us to carry us now engaged us means you're booked to carry us we've paid for uh, moving from one place to another so you better give us our fares back you can't leave us here all night now since the conductor stopped the bus obviously they're not moving now since they are not moving they better give the fares they get back their fares they've paid for moving right but once uh, the bus is stopped and they are not moving so their people are asking give us back our fares we don't want to go any further no fares back said the conductor two or three passengers got out and disappeared into the night the conductor took another turn on the pavement then went and had a talk with the driver now he tried another once more and he went and had a discussion uh, with the driver another bus the last one on the road now the last bus was crossing by another bus the last one on the road sailed by indifferent to the shouts of the passengers to stop now this other bus is also coming it's crossing by so the passengers of this bus which had been stopped by the conductor started shouting and waving hands for the other bus to stop so that they could move to that bus but that bus was the driver of that bus was very indifferent he did not stop for the people for this bus they stick each other they stick by each other the villains was the comment now uh, the people here are saying that all the drivers they are similar kinds they don't uh, they they are all together in one kind of a team so they will not listen to us they are all villains someone pulls the belt violently now the belt is uh, the the bell the bell is attached with a, a string a belt so once that is pulled violently it it creates a lot of noise that brought the driver around to the door who's conductor of this bus he said now the driver is getting angry why did somebody else do that it's only the job of the conductor when he wants to stop the bus is a conductor who does that so now the driver is saying who's conductor of this bus he said and paused for no reply nobody replied none coming he returned to his seat and resumed beating his arms across his chest now uh, the driver is very upset very angry when he heard this belt in a very loud manner he went towards the gate and he asked who is the conductor nobody responded so he goes back to his seat and folded his hands and he sat there in a very angry manner none coming he returned to his seat and resumed beating beating his arms across his chest there was no hope in that quarter means there was no hope left for him that something would happen a policeman strolled up and looked in at the door an avalanche of indignant protests avalanche what do we mean by avalanche it means a a very sudden strong that storm that comes in that's an avalanche an avalanche of indignant protests angry people who were angry so it was a storm of that i mean lots of people being angry and shouting and yelling and all that so there were angry protests and appeals burst on him people are telling him to move further but no use he's not moving well he's got his rules you know he said genially what do we mean by genially well genially basically means in a very cheerful manner now well he's got his rules you know he said genially now who is this when the people are being angry at the driver the driver just turns around and he says that he's got his rules that the conductor is not wrong he's just talking on the rules as per you should move so in a very cheerful manner the driver just says that he's got his rules give your name and address now oh well i i just uh, made a mistake this is not the driver who's saying this is the policeman who had been strolling uh, there a policeman had come over so now the policeman is asking well he's got the rules so he's telling the conductor has the rules with him so you can just give your name and your address now this lady says that's what he has been offered the lady is saying i offered him that but he refused to take it that's what he has been offered 
and he won't take it means he refused to take his name and uh, her name and address but instead he told the lady to move down the bus oh said the policeman and he went away and took his stand a few yards down the street where he lay where he was joined by two more constables now uh, the policeman is like when he got to hear the story oh said the policeman and went away and took a stand a few yards he was standing a few yards away from the bus down the street where two more constables came in and they joined him and still the little dog blinked at the lights and the conductor walked to and fro on the pavement conductor was very angry still uh, waiting for the lady to move up the bus to and fro he is moving from here and there like a captain on the quarter deck now what's a quarter deck it's the top part of the ship where uh, generally the captain uh, stands there for further view and further guidance of the ship so the meaning which is already given here the upper deck of the ship near the stern frequented by only the higher ranking officers on board okay in a, like a captain on the quarter board in an in the hour of victory the conductor is thinking that he has won the whole uh, challenge of bringing down the lady so in the kind of a victory for him in that process he is moving up and down the pavement a young woman whose voice had risen high above the gale inside gale the uh, blowing wind now inside means inside the bus when people were very angry and uh, upset with the whole episode of the bus stopping so they were a, a little voice a young woman's voice said descended on him with an air of threatening and slaughter the conductor is being talked somebody is talking a lady is talking with a lot of threatening and slaughter means about to chop you down with whatever you say he was immovable in spite of that he did not move away from what he had said he was immovable as cold as the night and as hard as the pavement means as cold as the night here uh, a simile has been shown here as cold as the night means the it's so cold the night is so cold that it hits uh, the person's skin and all similarly this man this conductor is so cold he's so ruthless he's so inhuman that he doesn't bother about feeling for what the this lady might be feeling going through and as hard as the pavement means he is very tough to move away from his decision or whatever he has said that the bus does not move any further so he is as as hard as the pavement she passed on in a fury of impot impotence now fury is anger and impotence is a kind of a structure like a statue like figure he was just standing there to the three policemen who stood like a group of stat statuary up the street watching the drama the policemen neither had i mean the, even they did not have anything much to do about this why simply because the law was towards uh, the conductor and police will not go against the law will they then she came back imperiously beckoned to her young man imperiously children means the inability to change things or influence the situation and beckoned her man beckoned is a kind of uh, uh, a kind of a way of calling like i can call you with my hand or i can just nod my head or something it's beckoning it's just by a show show an action by which to signal someone with finger or your nod somewhere of calling okay who had sat a silent witness of her rage and vanished others followed the bus was emptying gradually the people started leaving the bus some walked down some vanished in the dark in the night they kept going away even the dashing young fellow who had demanded the number and who had declared he would see this thing through if he sat there all night ha had taken an opportunity to slip away just a few minutes back we had come across uh, this man who was asking the conductor his number and he said that uh, you better he was planning to sort it out sort out the whole confusion and everything even he found a way and he slipped off he ran away from there 
Meanwhile, the per Pekunese, that's the way we pronounce it. Meanwhile, the Pekunese party was passing through every stage of resistance to abject surrender. Resistance means to stop something and abject is a hopeless surrender. There's nobody who's going to actually surrender. Who's been called the per uh, uh, Pekunese party? Who are, who are they? Those, those two ladies and the gentlemen who had boarded the bus along with their dog. So they were very resistant and very hopeless to surrender. They were not planning to surrender at all. But they had to. They had no other option. They could not stop themselves from surrendering. surrendering. I'll go on the top, said the sealskin lady at last. You mustn't. I will. Now who said this? You must. One of her companions most probably. I will. You will have pneumonia. As it is, she had cold and now she goes up on the bus along with the dog. She'll catch uh, pneumonia. It's going to be a very, very strong kind of a cold that she'll catch. Let me take it. This, now this is from the man. The man uh, said this. Let me take it. Certainly not. She would die with her dog. The man said that he will take it up there. But then she said, certainly not. Uh, she'll die with her she would die with her dog. She'll not give it away, but she'll prefer dying with her dog. When she had disappeared up the stairs, the conductor came back, pulled the bell and the bus went on. So finally, the lady was up on the bus. The, uh, the conductor came inside the bus, pulled the bell. That's an indication he gave the driver that the bus can now move further. And so the bus did move further. He stood sourly triumphed. Sourly is that bitter feeling inside and triumphed is full of victory. He had, uh, he was successful in what he had want, uh, what he wanted to do. Triumphed while his conduct was savagely discussed in his face by the remnant of the party. Now remnant is the leftover of the party. Leftover of the party who? One lady is up there and one lady and one gentleman down here who are giving very angry looks to the conductor. Very cruel kind of looks to the conductor. Then the engine struck work and the conductor went to the help of the driver. Something happened wrong with the engine so the bus most probably must have stopped again. Now here the conductor went to the driver to help. It was a long job and presently the lady with the dog stole down the stairs and re-entered the bus. When the engine was put right, the conductor came back and pulled the bell. See what is happening here. There is some flaw, there is some uh, damage in the engine which has happened and some fault in the engine. So the bus stops, the conductor goes quickly towards the driver to help him out. Meanwhile, what happens? That lady with the dog upstairs comes down the, inside the bus and she sits with the dog inside the bus. At that time, the conductor did not see anything. He came inside, pulled the bell and then the bus moved again. Then his eyes fell on the dog and his hand went to the bell rope again. Again, he pulled that bell. The driver looked around. The conductor pointed to the dog. The bus stopped and the struggle recommenced. Recommenced means that same old fight started again. The whole episode started again with all the original features. Now, what are the original features mentioned here? Let's see them quickly. The conductor walking the pavement. Remember he was doing that? The driver smacking his arms on the box, hitting on that box of the in front of his uh, what do you call the steering and all the little dog blinking at the lights the seal skin lady declaring that she would not go on the top and finally going so the whole episode happening again and then finally again she agrees that okay i'll go up i've got my rules said the conductor to me when i was the last passenger left behind now finally the bus reaches the destination and everybody is uh, leaving the bus. They are getting down the bus. And obviously the last passenger is that lady who gradually comes down. And then from there, she is almost leaving the bus. And the conductor is uh, 
giving her an advice or lecturing her that time that he is saying i have got my rules he had won his victory but felt that he would like to justify himself to somebody the conductor had won his victory right but he felt that he had to talk about his victory he had to justify he had to tell that he was right something uh, that he had done was something very right so he had to tell something to somebody and who that somebody was of course the last lady rules i said are necessary things but there are rules and rules some are hard and fast rules like the rule on the road you cannot change them traffic rules you have to maintain which cannot be broken without danger to life and limb now if you want to break them there's obviously an accident going to happen so either you lose your life or your limb limb or your hands or your legs something breaks or your life goes so there's no chance of not following those rules there but then another kind of rules some are only rules for guidance means for guiding you how to go about with things which can apply or wink uh, wink at when a wink at here means uh, to at ignore sometimes you can ignore that something uh, at times so as common sense dictates now whatever your common sense whatever your thoughts tell you are right or wrong that is again a rule for you like the rule about the dogs what was the rule that they are not a wimp put in your hand to surge your passengers with now surge is to wimp used to punish people in power in the past here it is used as cause suffering now you can't keep a dog in your hand as a whip well basically the rules are being talked about that you cannot keep a, a rule in your hand to hit others your other passengers but an authority for an emergency that means in any kind of an emergency those rules are very well applicable you can be uh, you can use those rules very well okay <clears throat> further but an authority for an emergency they are meant to be observed in the spirit not in the latter means you should be happily using those rules not in a way of a problem kind of scene creating kind of an uh, a thing happening there not like that but you should be happily agreeing to something which is good for your own self you have kept the rule he is telling the lady the conductor here is mentioning that you've kept the rule but what is the one thing that is not there you've kept the rule and broken its spirit the happy way of following it you did not do it you followed it finally you were there on top of the bus but you did not follow it in a proper spirit with the proper happiness you want to mix your rules with a little good will and good temper don't do that you cannot have your rules in an angry way be happy with your rules in how you are adjusting to your things and your uh, your uh, what do you call it? maybe your rules your certain things which you are implementing on yourself so please follow that in a proper way and not being angry and disgusted with something like that he took it very well and when i got off the bus he said good night quite amiably amiably means very um kind of uh, in a very happy kind of a way very feeling good from inside he just wished her a good night in a very quite happy way he wanted to be uh, good to her even in the end so basically this was our entire story which was about a story revolving uh, episodes or events happening revolving around a dog that is why the name of the story is all about a dog well dogs role basically here is very less but the rules and the things happening were all because of this little dog i hope you did enjoy the story and uh, must have picked up some good moral from here of following our rules for our own benefits thank you